Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our channel Spring. I'm Paul Throt, and I am here, as always, with my wife, Stephanie. Hello. Hello, everybody. So we've been working on the book, and Stephanie's been expanding on our restaurant reviews with more detailed write-ups that we put on the blog. Uh, we don't want to ignore the channel, uh, so we thought we'd post a video version of each of these restaurant reviews for those who prefer, prefer video, obviously. Um, we're going to try to publish these alongside the blog version of each review going forward, but need to start with the two we've already uploaded, right? So <laughs> Quintonil and Taqueria El Califa de Leon. Um, these are two places that literally hit on the exact opposite ends of the spectrum by experience, cost, you know, culinary quality, whatever. <laughs> um, we have to start somewhere. So let's start with Quintonil. Yes. Um, so Quintanil is one of only um, two restaurants in Mexico that Michelin Guide awarded two stars um, when that guide came out for Mexico this year. Uh, both of those restaurants in, are in Mexico City, the other one being Pujol. Um, we went to Pujol back in August 2021, um, and we're going back there in November this year. So we will have an up-to-date review here and on the blog and in the book towards the end of the year. Um, but actually, you know, we didn't need the Michelin guide to know that Quintanil was a special place because it's regularly listed alongside Pujol as, you know, among the top fine dining experiences in Mexico city. Um, we tried to get in once before in July, 2023, um, we were not able to get past the wait list because we didn't book far enough in advance. So, um, this time I made a reservation about a month before our trip. Yeah, so like Pujol, uh, Quintonil is in Polanco, which is kind of a pain to get to unless you're in Polanco. <laughs> Everywhere else, it's like a siphon. You know, it's yes. hard to get there. Um, I would say the experience is very similar from a presentation food quality perspective to Pujol, but the big difference is what we noticed just immediately walking up to the place. Um, right from the street, you can see where Pujol is this entire property. Uh, it's like a compound, right, with a mansion, a big garden, an outdoor area, lots of trees. Um, Quintanil is not impressive at all from the outside. It looks like a storefront. It's nothing special. It, it shares the building with other businesses that are right up on top of it, you know, and it doesn't own that entire space. So right away, it was this kind of weird, oh, like this doesn't look too great, you know, from the outside. Yeah, um, it is. It's a lot better once you step inside. Um, it's a nice space inside. It's, it's not um, as open and airy as Pujol is. Um, but as soon as you go in, you're greeted by several people. Um, it's fine dining. So there's a lot of interaction um, with the restaurant staff. They're all super helpful. They're very friendly. Um, they speak English. So if you need that, you're in good hands. Um, also, being a fine dining experience, it's expensive. <laughs> there's our um, two tasting menus. They both change seasonally. Um, there's one for the main dining room. And then one on a counter that you can sit on that faces the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, there's also two different types of wine pairings and then a non-alcoholic drink pairing. Uh, however you slice it, it's an expensive meal. Yeah. Um, we ended up ordering one of each of the wine pairings so we could try all of the wine, I guess. Um, and our total, including the tip, was over $900 U.S., Right, uh, for the two of us um, you can save a little bit of money uh, you can buy wine beer they have other drinks a la carte um, the least expensive version of the meal we had if we just had had water <laughs> and, and paid the tip would have been still over 540 dollars right so th this is just expensive period not just for mexico right but in our experience in the united states europe whatever um, but off off the charts for mexico you know we eat lunch for as mm -hmm. little as seven dollars for the two of us all in um and then maybe the thing to compare it to would be just the typical dinner we would have at a place like la chicha which is one of our favorite places around the corner um is about fifty dollars for the two of us so slightly more expensive uh yeah Antonio. yeah yes uh you just it's definitely a place that you have to be interested in fine dining and have the budget to support that interest if you want to go um yeah. to quintanil and you know, as you expect, it's a 
multi-course tasting meal um, with a wine tasting that is served ahead of each course. Um, every wine, um, we had the two pairings, so each each of the two wines was explained to us before every course, and then each dish had an explanation as they serve it at the table. I find this kind of thing a little off-putting. Um, there are always servers showing up. You know, they're around us, they're behind us, they're next to us, they're dropping stuff off, they're taking things away, they're interrupting us to tell us about that next thing, you know, and it's it's this level of pampering that I'm not really into personally, although, to be fair, I mean, everyone there was fantastic. Yes, and I would say that also it's part of the fine dining experience to have all these unique and creative, unusual dishes and yeah have them explained to you. So I, I enjoyed learning about them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. So let's, maybe we should run down what our meal looked like, although this it changes seasonally. So this will be different by the time mm -hmm. people get there. I guess. Yes. So we were there in June, 2024 mm -hmm. and the meal started with um, corn and turnip chilled atole with Mexican herbs, which is a warm um, soup. And then the next course was um, a melon and tomato salad with rice horchata and pumpkin seeds. Um, after that was a bluefin tuna with wasabi ice powder. That was really interesting. Um, we liked that a lot because we really mm -hmm. love sushi. Um, and then next was a pibil duck tamal with young corn cream. That was like over the top fantastic. Yeah, that might have been that my favorite. Big. Yeah. The whole, mm -hmm. the whole experience. Yep. So each of those was kind of a, an individual plate for each of us, obviously. And then the next course was actually a multi-dish <laughs> ensemble, um, which was, just, let me see if I can get this right. It was described as an entomophagy, <laughs> entomophagy <laughs> festival. Um, I'll get to that in a second. But there was uh, vegetable ceviche, avocado tartare, um, oyster mushrooms, Oaxacan beans, striped bass. There was all kinds of stuff and tortillas and salsas and you know, it was kind of a really high-end uh, taco bar, right? And we had actually had trouble finishing it. Um, we looked this up. So this entomophagy term is the practice of eating insects. Um, but don't be too put off by that. It wasn't like there were plates of bugs or anything like that or little creatures anywhere. It was oftentimes these things are just ground up and they're used almost like salt or um, a spice, essentially. Uh, and I I didn't notice anything off-putting in this. no. If you didn't, area. you wouldn't notice, you wouldn't notice that this was a bug centric dish. Yeah. You wouldn't notice that <laughs> there were no legs, you know, it was like a, no, like a lot no of eyes, no something. antennas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then after that, you know, cover the tabletop course, we got back to smaller dishes again. Um, the next one was braised oxtail on an open tortilla with served with brown butter, which was amazing. Yep. Um, after that came uh cactus paddle sorbet which was the palate cleanser between the kind of the savory courses and then the desserts um then there were three desserts there was a um a creme fraiche with honey on a spoon where you ate the honey off the spoon to start the meal and then or the dessert and then you kind of had the flavor of the honey in your mouth to eat the rest of it that was kind of interesting mm -hmm. um a mango colada with a toasted rice and seaweed and then the final dessert was a mame fruit panna cotta tartlet, which is a little tart, and some chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> yeah, which which we could have had more incredibly of. Incredibly good. We had enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, they should be, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, we kind of blew that through that in a few minutes, but we were there probably two and a half hours, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, when we left, we got a little bit, uh, a little gift bag. It had copies of the food and wine menus, which are nice because th that was not a thing on the table ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, and that was something Stephanie was kind of hoping for. Um, there was a booklet highlighting some of their ingredients and lists of other places they recommended Mexico City, which I thought was kind of interesting. And then there was a uh, a sweet potato conch for each of us, and I gave mine to the Uber driver because I don't eat that kind of thing, uh, <laughs> which he was very appreciative of. I ate mine for breakfast and I yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, anything stand out overall in this experience for you? I mean, I thought the food was fantastic throughout the meal, but the service was really incredible. Um, yeah. We interacted with probably more than a dozen servers and other employees. And there's just, um, 
just a real attention to detail, you know, from mm -hmm. two people bringing our plates so we get served at exactly the same time to somebody noticing that I was left-handed. So they had put a little silverware rest down on to my right side and they discreetly moved that over to the left and then served yep. my silverware on that side for the rest of the meal. I mean, it's it's definitely it's definitely a high end attention to detail yeah. from both the food side, the service side, the experience side. Um, not, nothing is overlooked. Everything yeah. is close attention is paid to every part of this meal. Yeah, that happened without any interaction. I mean, it was, just, yes. it, it, it was right. noticed, it was changed. Yeah, <laughs> was I didn't move it myself. I thought that know? was kind of interesting. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think it was a great experience overall. I, I, I do still feel like Pujol wins on overall ambiance because of that beautiful indoor outdoor space they have but the food at Quintanilla was incredible I mean the people were fantastic like you said this is not the type of place we go to a lot um you know no that our last Pujol experience might have been our last experience at such a restaurant um <laughs> so I can't imagine we're going to go back anytime soon but that's just because we don't do this type of thing a lot that said we are in fact going back to Pujol like we said so I'm curious to experience that food again and then you know maybe have a more up-to-date comparison to make so mm -hmm. we'll do that yeah. soon mm -hmm. so i guess that's it for quintonil uh yep. we will be back soon with another video thank you for watching thank you bye